Aung San was the man most responsible for Burma's eventual independence in 1947 and is often cited as a modern hero and as the father of the nation in modern Myanmar. This video will discuss Aung San's actions following his escape from Burma in 1940 and how he came to be recruited by the Imperial Japanese Army for what he believed would be the liberation of his homeland. We will look at how he and the Japanese recruited and trained the 30 comrades, a corps of revolutionaries who would come to dominate the military and political future of Burma for the subsequent 50 years. On August 14, 1940, Aung San and another Takin colleague, Lam Yang, boarded the Norwegian cargo ship Hai Li to Xiamen, China in order to escape arrest under charges of sedition. Neither Aung San nor Lam Yang gave their real names, identifying themselves as Tan Luang Shun and Tang Su Tang. They arrived in Xiamen on August 24, 1940, and stayed at an inexpensive lodging house at the International Settlement on Gulangyu Island, which was administered by a joint Chinese, Japanese, and American government. During their first two months on the island, they tried unsuccessfully to establish contact with the Chinese Communist Party. By the end of this time, they had nearly run out of money and Aung San had contracted dysentery. The last of their funds were exhausted after an incident in which the two men avoided arrest only by paying a 75 rupee bribe. And in the end, they were able to survive as long as they did only because Lam Yang was able to find work as an English teacher. Eventually, Aung San wrote to his friend Bola Ya about his poverty and illness and requested that his friend arrange contact with the Japanese to rescue them. Bo Let Ya wired several hundred rupees to them and forwarded this request to his Japanese contacts along with pictures of Aung San and Lam Yang. This request eventually reached a Japanese intelligence operative active in Burma, Colonel Suzuki Keiji, who then forwarded the request to his friend, Colonel Kiyoshi Tanaka, at the Japanese Army Command in Taiwan, who agreed to send several Japanese intelligence officers to the island to look for the two Burmese men. In November 1940, a Japanese spy, Major Kanda, found Aung San and Lam Yang and arranged for their passage to Japan. The pair left for Tokyo via Taiwan and arrived in Japan on September 27, 1940, the same day that Japan signed its military alliance with Nazi Germany. The previous year, in the spring of 1939, Japanese intelligence officers led by Suzuki Keiji had arrived in Yangon posing as journalists in order to gather information and to seek the cooperation of local parties for the intended Japanese invasion of Burma, occupying an office at 40 Judah Ezekiel Street for that purpose. Among their network of local collaborators, they made close connections with the Takins, of which Aung San was a leading member. The familiarity of Japanese intelligence with prominent political actors in Burma ensured that they were well aware of Aung San's identity and activities in Burma by the time that he arrived in Japanese-occupied China. Suzuki was later forced to escape Burma after the British learned of his activities on October 1940, but he vowed to return. Aung San spent the rest of 1940 in Tokyo learning the Japanese language and political ideology. At the time, he became indoctrinated in the philosophy of contemporary Japanese politics, writing that he was opposed to Western individualism and that he intended to create an authoritarian government modeled on Japan and Nazi Germany, including only one state, one party, and one leader. While in Japan, he dressed in a Japanese kimono and adopted a Japanese name, Omada Monji. During this time, the Blueprint for a Free Burma was drafted, a plan for how Burma was to be governed following its conquest from the British. This document has been attributed to Aung San, though it was based on a draft originally written in August 1940 by Takin Mia, Dr. Ten Mong, and Colonel Suzuki, while Suzuki was still in Rangoon. In February 1941, Aung San, working with Japanese intelligence, left Lam Yang in Bangkok. He then secretly re-entered Burma and began efforts to contact and recruit additional Burmese agents to work with the Japanese. Aung San's preparations for the mission included being fitted with a pair of false teeth by a Japanese dentist and receiving a Japanese passport from the Japanese Ministry of Communications. 
He entered the colony secretly through the port of Basen, changed into a Lanji, and booked a train to Rangoon using a pseudonym. By July 8, 1941, he had recruited 30 of his old revolutionary colleagues and smuggled them out of the country via Japanese intelligence networks. These 30 comrades were taken to the Japanese-occupied island of Hainan for further training. Aung San was 25, the third oldest of the group. The Japanese comrades trained for six months in Hainan with Suzuki Kaiji and other Japanese officers. Three of the 30 comrades, Aung San, Nei Win, and Aung Tan, all received special training since the Japanese intended to place them in senior positions in the Burmese government following the Japanese conquest of the territory. The camp where the 30 comrades were trained was named the San A Agricultural Training Institute in order to disguise the fact that it was a guerrilla training base. And both local farmers and regular Japanese naval officers were forbidden to enter without special permission in order to keep its nature secret. The Burmese were trained using weapons that had been captured from Chinese soldiers rather than Japanese weapons for fear that if Burmese guerrillas were captured by the British during a prolonged war carrying Japanese weapons, it may lead to an international incident. Aung San often served as the group's advisor, guide, and mediator during difficult points in their training. At the time of their training, Aung San and the 30 comrades did not know that they would be invading Burma as an auxiliary force behind the Japanese army, and had been led to believe that they would be operating alone to organize a guerrilla insurgency against the British. When they eventually learned how the Japanese were planning to use them in late 1941, they felt betrayed and misled, but felt that they had no choice at that point but to continue working with the Japanese. On December 26, 1941, Aung San received instructions from Suzuki to begin recruiting the descendants of Burmese settlers in Thailand. And by the time of the Japanese invasion of Burma, he was successful in recruiting approximately 3,500 Burmese volunteers from the Siam-Burma border to serve in their army. On December 27, 1941, Aung San first suggested that the group adopt pseudonyms in order to protect their families in the event that they were captured by the British, and to give pride and confidence and sense of mission. All 30 of the men took pseudonyms beginning with the word Bo, meaning officer, which had become a title used by Westerners in Burma. Aung San took the nom de guerre Bo Teza. Teza means fire. The event involved the Toi Tok, or blood drinking ceremony, a tradition inherited from the Burmese aristocracy. In this ceremony, participants collected their blood from a cut in their arms, mixed the participants' blood together with alcohol in a silver bowl, and drank it while pledging eternal comradeship and loyalty. On December 28, 1941, Aung San and the rest of the 30 comrades formally inaugurated the Burma Independence Army in Bangkok. On December 31st, the Burma Independence Army took part in the Japanese Leaving the Front ceremony in a parade through Bangkok, marching towards Burma behind the invading Japanese 15th Army. Aung San was ranked third in the organization of the BIA as a major general, behind Suzuki and a Japanese captain named Kawashima, who had been one of the officers most responsible for their training in Hainan. Thank you for watching. In our next video, we will discuss what happened following Aung San's return, in which he led his Burmese followers with the Japanese army back to Burma. We will examine his role as a political and military leader in Japanese-occupied Burma, and we will attempt to interpret how his relationship with the Japanese changed following their occupation, eventually leading Aung San to turn his back on them later in the war.